Algebra 1, 11.9b, word problems with formulas that equal a radical. So if you haven't seen 11.9a first, there's a link in this video's description to take you there. We talked about the principle of squaring. This is 11.9b. You might be okay if you follow along, but you're going to have to pay attention, okay? So to solve for x, if we have 10 equals 2 times the square root of x, what we would do is we would put this 2 coefficient underneath the 10 on this side of the equal sign. We would divide the 10 by 2, which is 5. And now we have 5 equals the square root of x. We square both sides to remove the radical sign, and we get 25 equals x. So squaring a radical removes the radical sign. We talked about this in the last video. If we've got the square root of 16 and we square it, that means we've got 16 times 16. Well, that means 4 times 4, and 4 times 4 is 16. So see, by squaring it like this, we're just pulling off the radical sign. See? It's just whatever the radicand was. If we have the square root of 25 and we square it, that's the square root of 25 times the square root of 25 is 5 times 5, which is 25, see? So you put a little 2 exponent up there to square it, and you pull the radical sign off, okay? So the formula v equals 3.5 times the square root of h tells us how many kilometers, that's the v, that we can see from the height of h meters above earth, whatever the meters are, h, okay, is going to represent it. So if an airplane is flying at an altitude of 12,321 meters, how far in kilometers can we see? So we plug in the 12,321 for h, because that's the altitude, that's the height. We find a perfect square for 12,321, and that's 11 times 11. So we pull one of them as a number to multiply by 3.5. See? We do 3.5 times 111, and we get 388.5. That is what v is in kilometers, the distance to the horizon would be 388.5 kilometers. See? So what I did was, in this one, I plugged in the height. I found the squares here. I multiplied it and got the answer. See? In this one, I had a variable underneath the radical sign, so I had to divide by the coefficient. See? Now, to decode some words for you, you might see this in your textbook, It'll say a number that is twice its square root. Well, a number that's twice its square root is two times the square root of that number, n. And if it says it is 14, well, that means it equals 14. So we would use this 14 equals two times the square root of n. We would use the same method we used here, OK? And we'd put the 14 over the 2, the coefficient, that's a 7. So 7 equals the square root of n. We square both sides. And 7 times 7 is 49. That removes the radical sign, and we get 49 equals n. See? And if it says a number that is opposite 2 times its square root, well, a number that's opposite 2 times is minus 2 square root of n. If it said it was opposite 3 times, then it would be minus 3. If it was opposite 4 times, it would be minus 4. See? And we don't know what the number is, so it's the square root of n, and it tells it it is negative 22. So to solve this, we put the negative 2 as a denominator here and divide negative 22 by negative 2. That makes a positive 11. Now we have 11 equals square root of n. We can do square both sides to remove the radical sign. And 11 times 11 is 121. It removes the radical sign. We get n. So our answer is 121. See? All right. And take a look at this picture here. This is the Willis Tower. It used to be called the Sears Tower. It's got radio mast right here that's 475 feet tall. That's pretty tall for a radio antenna, huh? So the Willis Tower in Chicago, that's the Sears Tower's new name, has a radio mast that is 475 meters high. How far can we see from the top of that mast? Well, they're not going to allow us to go up here, but if we were up here, sitting up here, hanging on for dear life at the very, very top, how far would we be able to see in the horizon? How far would we be able to see out? 
So we use that same formula that we used for the height in kilometers, and we plug in the 475 meters high, and we substitute that for the H, we find perfect squares, and we get 3.5 times the square root of 25 times 19, because that's a perfect square, that's not, and the square of 25 is 5, so we can pull it out, and this is not a perfect square, so it's going to stay underneath the radical. So now we've got 3.5 times 5, well that's 17.5. Now we need to find the square root of 19. I know it's in between the square root of 16 and the square root of 25, so it's in between a 4 and a 5, but it's a decimal in between a 4 and a 5, but where? Well, it's closer to the 4 than it is to the 5. 16 and 19 are closer together than 19 and 25, so I tried 4.3 and I tried 4.4. This was a little too, too small, this was a little too big, so I figured, what the heck, I'll just go with the 4.3, and when I multiplied it to the 17.5, I got 75.25 as an approximation, because it's not exactly 19, it was 18.49, it's an, only an approximation of the kilometer, so it's about 121 miles that you should be able to see from on top of that radio antenna. See? So, now we have another one. Take a look at this picture. Look at that, there's skid marks from an accident. So maybe they were trying to keep from hitting a deer or a dog or another car, but when they hit the brakes, the tires left rubber on the road and it skidded. So, the formula R equals 2 times the square root of 5L, that can help us approximate the speed, R, in miles per hour of a car that's left skid marks from tires that are a certain length L in feet. So the police and detectives can actually tell from the length of the skid marks how fast you were going. Because once you slam the brakes on and you start skidding, however long that is, tells them the speed you were going by using this formula. So for a, how far will a car skid that's going 60 miles an hour? So they slammed their brakes on. When they were doing 60 miles an hour, they saw something they were trying to avoid and they slammed their brakes on. How far is the car gonna skid before it stops? So we plug in 60 for the speed for R and two times the square root of five L. And L is gonna be the length of the skid. And we do it just like we did over here and down here. We divide by the coefficient here, and 60 divided by 2 is 30. That leaves the square root of 5L on this side. We have to get rid of that radical sign, so we square both sides. Don't forget, you got to square both sides. You can't just square this side and get rid of the radical sign. you got to do it to this side, too. Okay? It's really important that you square both sides. 30 times 30 is 900. Now we don't have a radical sign. We've got 900 equals 5L. We can just divide both sides by that coefficient, 5. Turn that into identity property, invisible 1, right? And 900 divided by 5 is 180. So we know it's 180 feet. So that car is going to skid 180 feet before it actually stops. So that's why they tell you don't follow someone too closely because if they slam their brakes on, you're not going to have time to skid and stop, okay? All right, our next video is 11.9c. We're going to talk about odd or even variables. And this is mentioned in a lot of the standardized tests that you take in school. So I thought it would be really helpful to talk about this before we go on to Chapter 12. And, if you, of course, in this playlist, if you want to go to the description, there's going to be the links to the previous videos or helpful videos. Okay? All right. I'll even put my algebra word problem playlist in there to help you out if you need that, okay? I keep updating it every time I add another algebra word problem, all right? So I'll see you next video. Keep your chin up. We're going to be fine. We're almost done with algebra one. Bye.